Walker! Kate Walker! Oscar, what's going on? Why has the train stopped? Where are we? The springs of the train are unwound again, Kate Walker. As for the question pertaining to our geographical location, I really haven't the slightest idea. Well, we'd better get looking for a winding machine, my dear Oscar. I hope that this place actually has one. The air here is so polluted that I could not possibly risk leaving the locomotive. My joints might corrode irreparably. Right. Let's see. Okay, let's try looking on the bright side here. I need to stretch my legs. Is there something wrong, Kate Walker? Are you uncomfortable? Are the passenger facilities on this train substandard? I shall draw up a formal complaint form for you immediately. No, Oscar, everything's fine, I assure you. A little walk will do me good, that's all. Gosh, it's really gloomy here. I wonder where on earth I'm going to find a winding machine. I have total confidence in you, Kate Walker. You are, after all, a brave and resourceful woman. Yeah, right. Oscar, you couldn't make a little effort for just this once. If we both went looking for the winding machine, the two of us together might find it quicker. You are in all probability correct, Kate Walker. But the high level of heavy metal miasma that pollutes the atmosphere could cause havoc to my wheelwork. Let's hope Hans Varlberg once lived here as well. Maybe he planned for his locomotive's unplanned stop and installed a winding machine as well. Otherwise, it's not looking great for the rest of the journey. Do not forget that Hans Vorlberg is a genius in the true sense of the word. But is he a genius with a sense of forward planning? We will find that out when we find the winding machine. My god, Oscar. What would I do without you? We just keep stopping. When will we ever get to the end of this journey? Simply wind up the spring and we can set off immediately. From your mouth to God's ears. See you soon, Oscar. I shall stay right here, Kate Walker.
you there? My god, Oscar! Oscar, talk to me! Are you okay? Why, it is absolutely inadmissible, intolerable, and... and... indescribable! I... I have been attacked! What do you mean you've been attacked? My hands! I no longer have them! They have been stolen! My god, you haven't got your hands! But who did this? What's going on here? We can be sure of one thing, Kate Walker. That this heinous crime was committed by a barbarian. A dysfunctional individual whose behavior lacks all finesse! Did you get a look at your attacker? Tell me exactly how it happened. I was standing here polishing up my metalwork. I was just thinking that with all the dust in the air, it would be a good idea to... Oscar! I was very busy, and I suddenly felt two powerful arms grab me from behind and tie me up before I had the chance to defend myself. I wanted to call out, but my attacker gagged me before I could emit the slightest sound. Then he dismantled my hands with a terrifying pair of pliers. It was horrible. I can believe it, my poor Oscar, but did you see him? He was a real barbarian, I tell you. He had bloodshot eyes, steel teeth, and brown scaly skin, and he emitted foul odors. He was a monster, Kate Walker, a real monster, and he had a weapon. Oscar, please calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Who the heck would be interested in automaton hands? Even though I say so myself, my hands are two marvels of technology. Please promise to return them to me intact as quickly as possible. I am very attached to them, Kate Walker. You were attached to them, Oscar, but like you said, I'm a brave and resourceful woman. Thank you, Kate Walker. But please, above all, do be careful. Don't you worry about that, Oscar. Right, Oscar. Let's go find this hand bandit. And this time we're not going to be such a pushover. Kate Walker, please do not think that this problem does not concern me. But if it's all the same to you, I would so much prefer to stay here, just to be on the safe side. An engineer never abandons his train, after all. Yeah, sure. Another good reason not to lend a... <laughs> I mean, not to help me out. Kate Walker, even an automaton deserves a little compassion. I have just been savagely assaulted. Oh, I can feel one of my spasms coming on. I am on the verge of a clockwork breakdown. And all you do is accuse me of being selfish. Okay, take a rest, Oscar. You're not much use without your hands anyway. How old do you think your attacker was? How old? Such monsters are ageless. I tell you, my wheel work froze with fear. I think he must have been an older man. Someone with a soft spot for automatons. An expert who knows how to dismantle a pair of hands with a pair of pliers. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. And what if it was Hans Varlberg himself? Kate Walker, in spite of the respect in which I hold you, permit me to say that such an idea is stupid. Hans Varlberg, my attacker. A father would never attack his offspring. Get a grip on yourself. 
I should point out in all modesty that my attacker must have had muscles to overcome an automaton of my build. Hmm. Maybe you're right there, Oscar. I do apologize. Do you know if your attacker stole anything else? As soon as he'd swiped my hands, he ran away. Well, at least that's one good piece of news. The train's still intact. What do you mean, intact? I am the train engineer! It was designed for me, and I for it! By maiming me in this brutal manner, the barbarian has also mutilated our locomotive. Without me and my hands, we're never going anywhere. Sure, okay. Could you maybe tell me how the train works, then? That is strictly forbidden, Kate Walker. There is only one engineer, and that train engineer is me. I am sure you don't have a license or authorization or even a deputy engineer's permit. Do you really think it's the right moment to get wrapped up in red tape, Oscar? Regulations are regulations, Kate Walker. Right. I'm done. Take care of yourself, Oscar. Good luck, Kate Walker. And don't forget me. My dear brother, what joy to have news of you after your long silence during the war years. So, you're working for the Russians now. I tell you, we've been hearing some worrying stories about them here. Just your description of that dingy factory makes me cough. But it's so good to hear that your talent is being recognized for its true value, and that your automaton creations are taking the place of workers for all those menial jobs. I'm so proud that Borelberg automatons are making such a contribution, even if it is small, to the improvement of people's lives. Meanwhile, back in Valadolin, we've been licking our wounds after the war years. Some people have returned, others not. Life is slowly coming back, but it's taking time. All my love, Anna. door is locked. I've got to find another way around.
Hello? Hello? Kate? It's Dan. Can you hear me? Da Dan, is that you? I can't hear you so good. Dan? Hey, stop. This conversation. I, are you still mad at me? Come on, this is, this is important. Dan, you're breaking up. I'll try and call you when I get out of this mine. You... Kate! Come on, what's happening? Listen, we've got to talk. Look, the line's just getting worse and worse. I'm hanging up.
Hey, you. Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? What do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back. Now! Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not joking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary. Real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never! Such workmanship. Such precision crafting. It is... It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy. Temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. You can... Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and fulfill my dreams. Everything is now in place. You see, I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, chimney stacks, they've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now all I need is her... <gasps> I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory! But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena. The one and only Helena Romansky. Her voice is so pure, like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoldsgrad. She sang here, you know, when our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then. Later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age, that is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romansky back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me, and me alone. And is she okay about this? Sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her, when she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made. Then, you know, this was no small achievement, miss. Once molten iron flowed through here, now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. But then you arrived. So lucky, don't you think? 
<laughs> yeah, that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. So, when will this Madame Romansky come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her, tell her. Hey, why don't you go? The quicker you bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? And you promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romansky was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. A shrine to her glory. It's like her own personal museum in a way. You should take a look. This whole story is completely nuts. You mentioned an automaton pianist, didn't you? Where did you find it? I pieced it together myself, my dear. Except for the hands, that is. I admit that I underestimated the intricacy of this part of the design. A pianist's hands are very important, after all. But enough. Now, he has a perfect set of hands. Your passion amazes me. Have you designed any other automatons here? No. Clockwork mechanisms do not interest me as such. I simply needed a robot capable of accompanying Helena Romansky on my huge organ. I adapted an existing model, a reject automaton secretary. I reconstructed it and adapted it to this new function. An existing model, you say? Did you ever know Hans Vorlberg? He was a kind of mechanical genius, like yourself. Hans Vorlberg? Yes. Or maybe... I don't know. No. No. Sure, I understand. The number of automatons still functioning in this abandoned complex is amazing, though. My dear, one thing is for sure. For many years, I have been totally alone here. If that man ever came to this city, he left long, long ago. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So be it.
Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I've simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank. Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, I dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with a Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arlbad, but it was 15 years ago, and he's not sure. And, well, honey, when Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. Thanks again. Catch you later. Hello? Did I wake you up? I can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. Oh, you know, I, I guess we were both a little high-strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah, I left the door to my office open and I was convinced everybody around heard me. Ah. Uh, I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. Promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true. I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And I still no Hans Warlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Director? Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Director, I think I know where Helena Romansky is. My God, you have found Helena? That is fantastic. How can I get to Arlbad? There is one way that you can. Here, in the city, there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, he'll have something. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. 
that he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Why don't you come with me? After all, you're the person in the best position to convince Helena Romanski. Unfortunately, since my accident, I seldom leave my office if I can avoid it. And it is not wise for a director to leave his city now, is it? I remember you saying that you didn't know Hans Varlberg. It's strange because there's a photo in your museum with a man accompanied by Helena Romanski and yourself. And that man looks just like Hans Varlberg. And so, does this prove that I know him? I think you have forgotten that only several years ago, this city was swarming with people. Do you think I actually knew every employee by their first name? No, of course not. Uh, but the man is holding hands with Helena, so I just imagined that maybe... Just imagined? Yes, you were. Imagining things, my dear. You have a mission in hand, Miss Walker. Pray, concentrate on it. From my research, Helena Romanski is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romanski is in Arlbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romanski would be happier here. I think she'll prefer the peace and quiet here, the perfect tranquility of our little town. Okay, I'm going. Wish me luck. I am counting on you, Miss Walker. Hello? Kate! Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia! Great, just the right person. Look, have you heard of Helena Romanski? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. Well, what relations this singer got with the toy cocaine? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that... I had a drink or two with Dan, because he wants to talk. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other day, and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? No! No, 
Not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on him for you at the same time. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that he'll be pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no, no worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. Excuse me, sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, but yoo-hoo, can you hear me? Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff! Oh, holy mother, <laughs> a dame, a, a pretty dame on the launch pad. Uh, please, no need to worry, sir, just do stay calm. I, I just want some information. Watch what you're doing, sweetheart. We ain't got no information, no strategies, no plans to tell anyone anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Military regulations, you dig it, babe? <laughs> My name's Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer from... I mean, I'm a bit lost. And I guess you know this place. Boris Charoff, at your service, madam. Can I offer you something from the bar? No, thank you. Tell me. How long have you been here? For as long as it took for you to come along, sweet pea. <laughs> Don't think I've been lonely. I got a bottle or two here. Keep me company. You're a soldier, aren't you? Ex-cosmonaut? Hey, honey, that's all in the past. Hell, let's talk about today. Let's have a drink. Now that's an order, soldier. Uh, please. Can you try and get a grip? I must absolutely find a way out of this industrial complex. Jeez, me too. I've really got to get out of this dump, but not before I've had a little drink. Here, yeah. get your pretty little lips around this. Vodka! Tell me what you think. Do you have a vehicle to lend me? I think I'd even test one of your rockets right now if I had to. Toast my rockets! Hey, pretty dame, I'll drink to that. Now, just a minute, we gotta need a special bottle for this special occasion. Something to blow you away. Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff! Okay, that's enough. What was that? Uh, did you say something? Are our female comrades revolting or what? <laughs> Uh-oh, trouble on its way. <laughs> Bottoms up! Power to the babushkas! I was going to... Oh, forget it, it doesn't matter. He's too drunk to help anyone anyway. I am not drunk. I have drunk. A little. <laughs> Strange. Sure, I left a bottle and two around here. I gotta get some air. Wall's getting pretty tight. We'll think about that blast off later, huh? Are you okay, Colonel? Are you sure you're all right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Be careful! Don't lean out too far or you'll... 
What's happening? That's water you've got there. Stop it! Now! You want me to drown? Calm down. It's all right. Just a little wake-up call, that's all. You must have had quite a bit to drink. Gee, you right there. Not the first time, either. Probably won't be the last. Man, my head. Please, could you whisper? Please, do excuse me. But it was the only way I could think of to bring you back to your senses. A little extreme, maybe. But I get the impression you're a lady who likes to see results. My name is Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer currently in charge of a special case. I'll spare you the details, but I've landed here, you see, unintentionally. It is indeed an honor to welcome you here to the Cosmodrome, ma'am. My name is Colonel Boris Sharoff. I'm a Red Army test pilot regent. Now I babysit the Kumkalsgrad space complex. This is an amazing complex. Shame it's a little run down. What do you expect? Space race is yesterday's news. That's the way it is. News one minute, history the next. I came here by train, but unfortunately it broke down. I've got to get to Arrowbad immediately. Someone told me you might have a vehicle to lend me. Someone? Who might that someone be? I hope you're not talking about Sergei Borodin. Well, <laughs> yes, I am the director of the industrial complex below. Be careful, ma'am. He is not a rational man. He can be mean and very dangerous. He suggested I come and see you, actually. But I get the impression that he doesn't care much for you, either. I don't care what he thinks of me. All I say to you is, watch out for him. There aren't many vehicles on this base. When they decided to close the Cosmodrome, they towed all the useful equipment away. It doesn't matter. I'll find some other way. If I can help you, please, just ask. I'm looking for someone. Hans Varlberg. And I think he came by here about 20 years ago. Hans? You want to know if I know Hans? But of course. 
He invented one of the most incredible flying machines of the Cosmodrome. Christmas! Good old Hans! Even after that dumb and dirty trick he played on me. But I wouldn't give to see him again. What do you mean? What did he do to you? Hans Varlberg and his famous flying wing. See? He invented this kind of spring-loaded launcher, capable of projecting a weird rocket into the stratosphere. It was red revolutionary hot. And I was going to be its first test pilot. Holy cow, what a job. And then several days before the launch, Hans disappears into thin air like that. Poof. My test program? Well, it's abandoned. Just disappeared like that? Without saying where he was going? You see, he wanted to hit the stars, but not bombs, if you get my drift. One day, Hans finally worked out what his launcher was really for. So the generals have always called the shots here, you realize, and, and when they asked Hans to screw a nuclear warhead onto his flying wing, well, he wasn't a happy man. So he left, just like that. If everything was ready, why didn't you just wind the thing up and go flying after all? Nobody understood machines here like Hans, especially not his own utopian inventions. You see, such inventions only live and breathe with their creator in the saddle. Without him, space travel became damn near impossible. Since then, well, I still like to travel, but in my own little way. I'm beginning to understand a bit about how Hans Vorlberg's inventions work. What is this one like? I don't really know. As you can see, I'm a soldier, ma'am. Nothing more, nothing less. And not a goddamn aerospace engineer. I've left my train in the Komkalsgrad station. Do you think it'll get in the way? If I were you, I'd get out of there as quick as possible. That's exactly what I intend to do, as soon as the director gives me back my automaton's hands. That's why I want to go to Arrowbad. So go. And go quickly and get back what belongs to you. With a man like that, you never know what might happen. You don't like him very much, then. I'll confess that since his accident, he's gone a little doolally. These days, I stay clear of him, and you should do the same. I don't really have the choice. Don't you find it strange to see so many birds in the Cosmodrome? It's the Iron Rafters. They love them. Nowadays, they can enjoy a bit of good old peace and quiet here. So, of course, they turn up in flock loads. <laughs> Sometimes I said Soyuz onto them. <laughs> Just like the good old days. Soyuz? Soyuz is the last Golden Eagle left in active service. We had to get the dumb canaries out of the way before takeoff, so what did we do? Set the eagle on them. And <laughs> you should see them fly. Soyuz? He's like a cat among the pigeons. Magnificent. Does Arrowbad mean anything to you? Arrowbad. It's been a long time since I heard that name. It's a spa resort, ma'am. Top brass of the regime would go there. As well as convalescing soldiers, tired politicians, profiteers and racketers, the whole caboodle. They'd go live it up, all expenses paid. One privilege I never got. Just two steps away from becoming the nation's hero and... No free holiday for me. And where exactly is this place? Further east. We never had to know where exactly. The airship was programmed to take vacationers there. From here. Thank you so much for helping me. I'm sorry to have woken you up like that. It's been great talking to you, ma'am. I think I'll take 40 winks right now. Sir? Uh, 
Sir. My head. Oh, my poor head. I need some quiet. Please, can I have some quiet? Do you think the airship still works? No idea. It's been so long since it was used. And then I've got to learn how to use it, too. You won't have any worries there. It has an automatic pilot. Go visit if you want. Here's the key. Thanks. Right, I'm off. See you later. Don't you worry about me. Doesn't look like that works. Uh, there you are. I was looking for you. I've managed to trigger the autopilot mechanism, but the airship still won't take off. Do you know why? Mm, maybe. I've got uh, some idea. But you look like you're a pretty good mechanic. Let's just say that since the start of the journey, I've managed to get by and get to know Hans Varlberg's strange contraptions. Okay. I have a deal to make with you. I've been living in this dumb launcher site for years. And I've always said that one of these days I'm going to the stars on that flying wing. And I'd better make that trip before vodka stews my brain. But I gotta know how it works. And you look like you might have some clue at least. If you could help me get to the stars, I'll tell you how the airship works. What do you say? We got a deal. Why not? I'll see what I can do for you. Comrade Boris, I need a few drops of your blood. Excuse me? To get the centrifuge going, we'll need to analyze the pilot's blood. If you're going to the stars, you've got to be in good health, you see? That's why I need a blood sample. 
it won't hurt. There's two things a good soldier is always ready to do. Drop his pants and spill his blood. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll only be needing your blood. My pleasure, ma'am. Okay, I think I've figured out how it works. Get settled in and let's go. <laughs> Colonel, are you all right? Never been better. Head's spinning a bit, but I am used to that. I'm a professional pilot. Clear as smog. Can you speak up? I'm ready. Press the launch button. Takeoff procedure engaged. Countdown commencing. Colonel, you've forgotten to tell me the secret of the airship. What do I have to do? Three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff. <laughs> 